Our exhibition uh, is called Staying with the Trouble and it's referring to the virus as a multiple reality. So during the last year um, we, are, uh, we were seeing the virus as an enemy and we were using this language of warfare to talk about the virus. Uh, but we usually forgot that this virus that we're talking about is only one species and um, the viral reality is much richer and um, our idea uh, was to uh, show it to the public and to help ease the anxiety a little bit uh, that we all have during the last year. And right now what we're usually doing, we're trying to forget about the virus and not to mention it at all because we're basically all tired of it. Uh, but again, when we're thinking about the virus, uh, it's always with us and uh, we cannot escape it, but we need to start and think how to co-live with the virus and how to accept it as a being part of our bodies, of our reality. And um, we both uh, decided that it would be nice to uh, present this opportunity to artists to think about how we can be with the virus and become with the virus. Um, and. Um, here we have, uh, as a curators, two perspectives. Mine is more uh, humanitarian and philosophical, and Laura's is more uh, biological, and uh, she helped a lot to understand what is the virus to me and to the artists who were participating. So right now I think she will tell about um, the virus and its biological meaning in our reality, and uh, then I will talk about the concept of it all. Mm -hmm. Indeed, as Christina was saying, the social and cultural discourse together with the medical research of the 20th century make of the virus this dark alien entity, a hostile subject against humans. However, the recent research, the virology research, had taught us how we are connected and dependent of the virus. This idea that we don't want to talk about the virus, we wish they didn't exist, well, basically, virus didn't exist today, probably human will cease to exist in two days. Because virus are those that are in charge of the ecological equilibrium in the environment. Also, our current reproductive system came from a mutation or collaboration with viruses that make possible for humans to have placenta and develop uh, our current system of bare children. Uh, so our history with the virus has been not only uh, something that we attack each other, but a collaboration uh, that make possible the evolution and the life that we know today. Considering all these facts, we invited different artists to plus, plus, can I, considering all this, yeah. Considering all of these, we invited different artists to share their ideas and create projects taking into account different perspectives of the viruses. And for that, uh, Christina and I developed a base with different ideas from philosophers that came to the name of the exhibition, Staying with the Trouble. So yeah, as Laura already mentioned, uh, the name of our exhibition came from the book of Donna Hardway, Staying with the Trouble. And uh, the idea that she is proposing in this book uh, is that instead of uh, autopoietic uh, replicating, so self-replicating systems which are encapsulated in one species, we need to think of the world, of our Earth, as a sympathetic, um, sympathetic development, sympathetic evolution. Uh, so we are not separated from other species, but we are always becoming with the other species. In her book, um, Nona Hauri is not talking directly about the viruses. She's mentioning them, but they're not the main heroes of the book. However, we think that the virus is um, developed in the log logic of symbiotic becoming, because um, as right now we know, um, around 45% uh, of our DNA is the viral sequences. And uh, this means that the whole species of human uh, was co-evolutioning with the virus from the beginning. And um, the idea of virus being a part of our DNA, being a part of our bodies, um, I think can help us to understand that it's uh, not 
right to try and avoid the viral reality, but we need to think how we can become with the viral reality, how we can study viruses, and this is basically what we're trying to do here. We're trying to show how rich this reality is and how many ways of collaborating with the virus uh, can be found here. So yeah, I think it's time to go and see the works and they will speak for themselves and they will elaborate on the ideas that we try to plant in our curatorial text and this curatorial uh, explanation. So we welcome you in this virtual tour, virtual mediation, uh, hoping that you can find these different perspectives from inside of our gallery. When you enter the gallery, uh, the first work that you see is a video by Finnish artist Thomas Aleitinen. This work is called Protein Sap. And from the beginning, uh, when you just know in the name of the work, you are faced with the multi-leveled play of words. So protein is on the one set, on the one hand, protein is the um, ancient god, Greek god Proteus. On the other hand, it's suspicious, like amphibians or reptiles. And the other meaning is protein structures, which are inside of our bodies. Uh, for artists, protein structures can be seen as a contemporary seer. What does he mean by that? Um, protein is something that can tell us where we came from um, during our evolution, because it has this memory. And on the other hand, the protein structures are always looking at the future, because they're helping us evolve. This video is putting you in this onavric state and uh, artist is mixing the ancient beliefs, ancient medical beliefs, like uh, the theory of humors, which are known today as a theory of temperaments, like melancholic, sanguinic and other types. And uh, during the ancient times, um, these temperaments were linked to some types of liquids. Uh, for example, phlegmatic, they had this transparent liquid and the medical beliefs, they were connected to these ideas of liquids. Um, and doctors, they were mm, making their decisions of how they should treat you basing on this idea of a temperament, if you're a melancholic or sanguinic or some other type. The viral reality is really hard to grasp and partly this is why we're so afraid of the viruses. Um, and uh, to help us understand better the viruses, artist is showing us these protein structures which are basically the shells of the viruses and other bacteria. And um, in doing so, he's proposing the idea of uh, using augmented reality and Instagram masks to try and, uh, try and fit uh, these protein structures to our bodies. And uh, this project is located on the other wall. In this area is when we can appreciate the other part of this installation where the biological form, forms from the video came into a physical and digital reality. When the spectator goes closer to the Instagram filter, the digital proteins from viruses, proteins, plants and other organisms are overlaid in the face of the observer making this transformation from the physical world into the digital. These artifacts are ceremonial objects of the transformation that help us to enter into this oneric and hallucinogenic state of the artwork. So when the observer comes here and the protein comes into their hair, creating their own digital augmented capside, and you become as specific virus uh, in this combination of physical and digital, it also allows you to reduce the anxiety when you are able to wear a part of the virus or to become a virus in this space. In the middle of the gallery, you will encounter the installation by Pei Ying Ling. This artwork, Barophilia, establish a very simple but important question. Can we change our perception of viruses as enemies? The recent research have demonstrated that many and many viruses are useful for our survival and even for treatments. Uh, in the ceiling, in this part of the installation, we have all the names of different viruses that had been studied so far until the day that this artwork was created. Uh, and in this hundreds of them is less than 10% of the viruses that exist or they are predicted to see exist in this earth. So our knowledge of virus, virus is still very small.
and there is much more than we can learn through it. So the idea of change or perspective of the viruses in the eyes of the artist comes in a journey of a sensory degustation and dinner with viruses. On the screens of the installation, you will see the performance that it was created online, where each participant received the whole dinner to experience the journey of viruses entering into their bodies. For example, the artists explain when the viruses are exploding the cells of the human, the food that you are degustating has some spi spicy flavor. This ritual uh, or this performance uh, allow us to understand virus not only from a scientific way, but also from a very tactile and sensorial uh, expression. As Lara mentioned, uh, the idea of pay in his work is can we reconsider the role of the viruses in our reality? And uh, she is asking the question if it's possible for us to start um, enjoy the viruses. So she's proposing this idea of a cooking book with recipes uh, which are infected with the viruses. And this book is coming to us from the uh, future, from the 2068. And uh, here we have different types of cuisine and different types of reactions uh, to the viruses. So artist is uh, proposing the idea that virusology will be continuing to show us the beneficial factors to our organism and to our reality. And uh, in the future, we might use viruses to change the taste of our foods. So for example, here uh, we have traditional South Asian dish where you're eating intestines of a cow. And when the cow is infected with the virus, intestines become softer, so you can use it in the agriculture production to change the food qualities and the taste qualities of the food. Or, uh, I really like this idea that uh, in the future you can vaccinate yourself uh, through eating food. So basically, you're mixing the pleasure and medicine and like you can go and drink in the bar this kind of cocktail and uh, you can order vaccine inside a cocktail and uh, you can mix this uh, medical process which is usually very frightening for us. We are afraid of vaccines uh, but now you can mix it with the pleasure and uh, you can spend an evening in a bar with your friends and vaccinate yourself uh, uh, all along. So what I really like about this idea is that of course this project works in speculative logic but we are eating viruses every day, actually, because lots of viruses are living inside of vegetables and fruits. So basically, when we are quarantining ourselves and we're thinking that we are, um, we are without viruses, right? We're still eating viruses. So being speculative, this project also is based on the reality of our being with the viruses every day and eating them um, while we're eating salad or something like this. Viruses have an important role in different processes, from medicine to a cooking recipe. When we acknowledge the omnipresence of the viruses in, from another perspective, something more aesthetic, it can help us to release our anxiety of knowing that they are all around us. In the installation behind me, we have a three-channel video of an AI generating blooming tulips. The artist Anna Riddler traveled to Holland and created a big database of pictures from tulips with stripes and without stripes in the petals. She was inspired by a historical period called the tulip mania in the 17th century. Uh, when the people start to notice that some tulips have the stripes in their colors and in the petals. However, they didn't know that this was uh, an effect of an infection of the mosaic virus. These unique and rare plants had an increased value in the market and everyone was looking for them. There was some theories, for example, the landlords were painting the soil in order that maybe that will create some pattern of different colors into the flower. There was a lot of speculation and this a speculation it developed into economical crisis. This was one of the first economical bubbles in the modern history. Therefore, the artists make a connection with one of the most recent phenomenons, an economical bubble created by the bitcoins and the cryptocurrencies. 
the neural network behind me is connected to the market value of bitcoins and they are generating these tulips according to the value that change every day. In these generative tulips, uh, you can see the effect of the market when the value comes up, the blossoming and the colors of the tulips appear and when they are degrading is because the value comes down. Therefore, she is creating this digital entity, this plant that exists just for a moment. Um, this is also a reference to the Dutch steel paintings when they were creating the plant and vegetal paintings of different plants that do not coexist in the same time. For example, painting some flowers from a spring period and another from winter. This is a different perspective of how virus can affect uh, in an aesthetic way another entities and also how to reflect in the economical system as a viral entity. So here we have the work by Yulia Vergazova and Nikolai Ulyanov and it's called Posthuman Documentary. Uh, this work is circulating inside the idea of speculative archaeology and um, it is pretty important in the context of our exhibition. Uh, so. Uh, the main idea of this project is a mutation, and as you saw already in the two previous works, the mutation is something which is inherent to the virus and which makes virus so effective. So here the artists, they are basing their work on the idea which was uh, written in the text of philosopher, philosopher Paul Preciado, uh, who is proposing uh, to understand our immune system politically. And uh, in this text, Learning from the Virus, the philosopher is proposing the idea that instead of being locked in our rooms, instead of running from the virus, we need to look at the virus and understand what is the most important trait of the virus. And definitely it is a mutation. Uh, so philosopher is proposing that instead of being forced to mutate, to evolutionary mutate, we need to choose mutation and to understand how can we mutate with other species to become more effective in this our reality. Here we have three types of data, plant, trilobites and microscheme. And um, this data is mutating as you can see in the video. And, um, while constantly mutating, it is also asking a question of what are the plants in our reality really are. Uh, because we think that plants, they lack subjectivity and this is why they lack political power. However, as we already saw in the previous work, the plants, they are really effective in co-mutating and co-evolutioning with the virus. So maybe that's what we should learn from them. We should learn how to become with the virus. and. You see in the video how these three data mutating is some kind of techno-biological symbiosis, techno-biological hybrids. And while in the video the form is constantly in search, uh, it's trying to become, uh, in the engravings which are next to the video, you can see what those forms could become. So here uh, you have the forms and how they might look. So the artist is imagining what those techno-biological hybrids might look like. And also what I think is really beautiful about this project is that the engravings in itself, the technology of making engravings, they are resembling the trilobites because as you can see it's some kind of a footprint or just print um, which are usually the form in which trilobites are found uh, in the fossil layer. And this is the idea behind speculative archaeology. So probably these technobiological hybrids are what can be found in our geological level of Anthropocene. And this is what future archaeologists might, fi might find while looking at our geological layer. Continuing with the idea of mutation, we have the artwork of Harm van der Dorpel. When we can see an abstraction of what it means to choose mutation or to not choose mutation. The artwork is called Hybrid Biker. That in biology is a process when you select the parents of a new species according to the characteristics that you want to have in the offspring of this mating. 
in the screen online we can see different entities that are created by an algorithm inspired in the genetic code. These entities possess a digital genome that generates the shapes, the lines, the colors. They are constantly mutating if there is not interaction from the observer into the screen. The participant can choose from the screen the two entities that will mate and generate the new generation. One of the effects that we can see when we are interacting with the artwork is that more closer are related these entities, the variability of the genome decreases. It also means that in some moment, the population will cease to exist. Therefore, here is the importance of keep choosing mutation, not only probably biologically or digitally, but also in the perspectives that we are acquiring. One of the outstanding characteristics of this artwork is that the entities, the digital entities are alive. They are mutating, they are mating, and they are generating an offspring. When the algorithm arrives to the end, the final presentation will be a printing of this image. So here we have the project by IBM Box Corporation. And IBM Box is working with the virus uh, for a long time. Uh, in their previous projects, they were working with a virus of tiredness uh, called Astenia. And the IBM Corporation were making some scientific and speculative developments of how we can conquer this type of virus. They were, for example, digging the very deep holes and they were finding there some living stones which could help us to uh, conquer this virus of Astenia. Here we have these open days of their new program, uh, Institute of Fatigue. Um, what can we see here? First of all, there is this booklet uh, which is descripting the educational program, uh, the new system of educating, uh, which is called Karataje, and all the, um, all the syllabuses of their teachers uh, which are going to start this new program. So what students are going to study in this program is a new type of discipline, social virusology. It is where we are discovering that viruses are, viruses are acting a lot like people and we are trying to see the patterns of social reality in the viral reality. Uh, also, uh, you have this form here. Uh, you can fill it in if you want to become the first students of this program. Uh, when you filled it, uh, you can put it in the box and after the exhibition ends, IBM Corporation will come and open the box and decide what students will become a part of their pilot program, pilot year. So here we have a work by Franco-Algerian artist Neil Belufra. And in 2014, he filmed a video series called Screen Talk, which was basically a prediction of how we would act during pandemia. So in this video, you have a narrative which are telling how our scientists are studying some kind of virus and uh, you see the people which are trapped in their apartments and all the way that they can communicate is basically through the screens. And this is what we've been through uh, the past year. We were talking through Zoom and sometimes we're still in this Zoom reality. When pandemia came, um, this work got a lot of attention and even New York Times wrote about it, like the artist who predicted the pandemia. And right now what we have here is uh, work, the, the video series which was remade in a computer game. This video is uh, reflecting on abstraction of scientific knowledge in absurdistic and satiric way. And when you play these quests, you're somehow reliving your, your experience during pandemia. Uh, so for example, here uh, you need to find like a dating app for a lady who is trapped in her apartment. And you need to find activities, what she would do. Or here uh, you need to delete 
uh, in time all photos of your ex-boyfriend because you broke up with them uh, with him because you couldn't see him anymore um, and the only way you can communicate is through the screens so here you need to delete all those photos so basically the reliving of this experience help you to get some distance and to reflect on what we've been through and to have a good laugh of our crazy activities while we are at home and we are really bored and we don't know what to do and how to communicate with our relatives and friends and loved ones among all the artists that we invited we also launched a small open call for the students of the art and science center in Edmo university uh, so they could propose a project in the framework of the virus and staying with the travel exhibition. And here we have a project made for the student Nadia Nave. She is collaborating with a scientist inside Itmo. Uh, this scientist is working with the idea of use viruses to treat bacterial infections. Viruses can attack bacteria and destroy the colonies. Therefore, if there is an infection in the, the human uh, driven by the bacteria, by using a specific viruses, the phagotherapy is a treatment that could help to improve the, he the health of humans. In this VR virtual reality space, the scientists and the artists are explaining how is this process of phagotherapy. One of the beautiful and very aesthetic sensations is to get inside the cells and inside the world of the virus, trying to understand or trying to be more empathic in the space of this virus through a digital area. So here we're entering the second space of our gallery, which, is, which was opened for the first time in the history of our gallery. And so in the first part of our exhibition, you already saw that virus can be a strategy of mutating an economical force, the beauty of flowers and lots of other things. And here, this work is presenting an artist as a virus and an artist as a viral form. Um, so this work is called this work is called Species is a blinking D dance linking kin and a kind. And it is a paraphrased citation from Donna Harvey's book. And uh, the artist Lera Lerner, in her practice, she works with the deformations of the body through a costume. And as you can see here, uh, the performance that she made uh, in our gallery, it was a part of infecting our space with this deformation of the bodies, these tumors, these viral entities are sprouting through the cracks in the space itself, through the holes which were left here by the previous owner of the space. And here we can see how the force of artistic influence can change the space and become some kind of a viral interaction. And this idea is yet again blurring the distinction between human and non-human, because we don't really say who is the agent of this act, the artist or the work itself, which is growing through all these cracks and holes in the space. So the next artwork is called Evolution, and it was made by Natalia Tikhonova. And basically it is a science fiction video uh, which is telling alternative story of the origin, origin of development of humanity. And um, the aesthetic of this video is playing with this fake science movies aesthetic, which is pretty uh, common in Russian TV. And um, while watching this video, you are hearing the voice which is telling you the narrative of the coming of human and human evolution as an experimental project made by extraterrestrial computer civilizations. This video is made in a found footage technique, so basically the artist is using uh, different existing videos and combining them to produce new senses and produce new meanings. And uh, for example, social networks from the point of view of the authors of the video were created to study the possible signs and causes of mutation, which have led to a total humanization. So by working with pseudo series of humanity, speculation, irony, the artist 
presents a critical view of the development of civilization as well as critical view to the producing of new meanings making by TV channels, YouTube channels, and she's playing with this aesthetic of fake science knowledge, which are basically sometimes are easier to believe for humans which are not connected to the science and scientific knowledge. So for the Russian viewer, when you're watching this um, video work, uh, you see its resemblance to such channels and as Ren TV uh, and all those narratives uh, where you are um, where you are told that, for example, Russian race uh, came to Earth because of some alien invasion, which came to Earth with some uh, meteors and uh, like dinosaurs. They were um, also created by alien civilizations, and this idea of speculating on um, scientific knowledge is explored in the video. Now we move to the next room of our exhibition. When we enter in this space where the installation of the artist Heather Dewey Harburg is constituted by the elements of the space, the wallpaper resembling the cells and viral entities in the other wall, as well as a poetic journey presented in an interactive hypertext. The whole installation goes around a simple question. What is the time for a virus? The research that has been performed to study time suggested that time passed different for organisms of bigger or smaller size. For example, when a human is actively moving uh, her hand to scare a fly away, the perception of this movement for the fly will be in a slow motion. The same as we are perceiving some of the movement of the cosmos, uh, for us, these movements are passing in a very slow time lapse. However, it could be in a second, in consider considering the mass of the space. So the question of how does a virus experience time? The artist is considering how to combine her experience of time during isolation in her room, in her house, with the idea of the journey of the virus. In the screen, you will be invited to travel with the virus in its cycle of life by pressing with your fingers this hypertext that is arranged in a poetic form and way that the spectator can join the daily and fast life of the virus because the virus is reproducing around of 200,000 entities per second. However, we are here analyzing how the virus reproduces by our own pace. Uh, the last work in our exhibition is a work made by Natalia Balabanova and it's called Tata Box. From the very beginning, uh, this work is starting with the play of words. So Tata can be written as the name of the artist Natalia and also Tata Box is a DNA sequence. And uh, as you saw previously, all of our artists are dissecting virus from sociological, poetical, biological uh, point of view. And here, for Natalia, the access to the virus is its DNA and RNA and the sequence of letters, uh, which are the viruses made of, but also all the living in the earth and human, um, we are all made of DNA and RNA. So basically, we are all the constant repetition of letters, uh, which can be read as a code. Uh, so if the virus is a code and all living is a code, then the gut is also a code. And here in this video, you see how the artist, she's trying to um, form this transcription from her physical form to code form, uh, so she could become closer to this code gut. This is not the only thing that she's doing. Uh, she's proposing the idea that if God is a code, then everything on Earth is also a code. So she's looking at the cultural phenomenon and she's searching for something that resembles the code and this repetition of the letters. And what is based in our culture on the constant repetition of the letters? It's karaoke. <laughs> So we have arrived 
arrived to the end of this virtual mediation. We appreciate your presence and we hope that your perspective of viruses change, taking a glimpse in all these different ways to see viruses. Thank you so much for being with us and uh, you should check our public program uh, which was built to uh, also enlarge the understanding of the virus from different points of view and we had anthropologists, sociologists, philosophers, um, art historians and of course artists presenting their works and talking about them and uh, talking about virus and how virus was uh, how virus was perceived um, in previous years, how it changed our nowadays reality, our corporeality, and our understanding of evolutionary development. <laughs>